Welcome to the channel, friends. So today's video is going to be covering this RTH series thermostat by Honeywell. And I'm going to be covering specifically the five common mistakes, problems, or issues people have when using this thermostat. Now, I've looked through all my comments on all my YouTube videos when it comes to Honeywell thermostats, specifically the RTH series, which is what you see here. Um, it comes in different variants. You got the RTH 2300, 2410, and 2510, and maybe even a couple others. But essentially, they look exactly the same as this right here. Um, they just have different features that are added or subtracted. So I also want to mention that Honeywell has a brand new version of this, which is this one right here. This is the new RTH series, which I cover in other videos. So if you want to check out this brand new released model from Honeywell, look at my thermostat playlist and you'll find the setup, factory reset, manual override and programming, everything soup to nuts when it comes to operating and setting up this thermostat. But we're going to cover the old style, the previous generation RTH, and we're, let's talk about those five common... There's, there's definitely more than five, but like I said, I searched through all my comments and some of them just jump out as a common thing. And I want to cover them in this video right here and I'll kind of go step by step through them and what the solution is. So let's start with number one, okay? So number one, you want to make sure your, all your connections are correct, okay? Let's start from the basics. If you're having issues with your, your thermostat turning on your heating or cooling system, you want to pop off first the base plate, or I should say the thermostat to access the base plate. And we want to take a look at what is connected in here, okay? We want to make sure that these are all nice and tight and that the wires themselves correlate with what we are trying to do. So if we're trying to do heat only or cool only or heating and cooling, let's make sure that we have all those wires that we need, okay? I will cover how to wire this thermostat up in a separate video, but this video I'm not going to go into, into detail. But at the very basic level, you want to make sure these are all tight. So you want to get a screwdriver like this one here and make sure your terminals are all tight, okay? Just like that. That is the very basic, very number one thing you want to do if you're having problems with this thermostat. Make sure that everything is tight, and you have the correct wiring needed for what you're trying to do in your home. Like I said, whether it's heating or cooling, okay? Once we make sure that the wiring is all set, we can go to the next step and I'll show you that, what it is. Okay, the very next thing I would do is put fresh batteries in it, okay? Very important that every six months, you change these things out, okay? Very important because when this thing goes on low battery, it does all sorts of weird things with the programming and possibly malfunction, okay? And it will be chasing its tail, causing problems, not working properly. So make sure you re replace these. I use rechargeable batteries in my thermostats because I just think it's more cost effective for me and it's been working out just fine, okay? So fresh batteries is a mandatory when you first start off the season, winter season, summer season, whatever. Every six months, make sure that you have fresh batteries. And when you take this off the wall, you want to hold this down with your thumb is what I found out to be a good um, practice. You want to hold this against the wall because if you don't, what's going to happen is when you pull this thing, you have to basically pivot it from the top. So the, the top is the fulcrum, okay? And you have to pivot it like that to, to release this from the wall. So what I find out <laughs> happens with this thermostat is that it rips the drywall anchors right out if you don't have like really secure ones. And that's probably a common issue that you have. So get yourself some drywall anchors that have like the, the basically look like a boat anchor and grab the wall, the drywall from the inside. Not just the ones that the plastic cheap ones that come with everything that really don't do much and they pull it right out with the screw. But that was just a little kind of quick tip. You know, make sure your batteries are fully charged or you have brand new alkaline batteries in your thermostat, okay? Let's move on to number three. Number three is one that got me recently, okay? This is a good one. This is, this is probably what screws up a lot of people when they go to try to use this thermostat 
and the thing just operates kind of crazy, does its own its own thing. Oh, it's operating like it has its own mind. Well, you, it probably is because you haven't set the time and date correctly, okay? On here, you have to set the time and date, okay? So you basically do that by hitting set. And what trips people up and what tripped me up is this small, tiny PM or AM. Now, that will totally flip your schedule if you have it incorrect. And that's what it did for me, okay? When I got my glasses and I saw that it was PM instead of AM, and it made sense why it was triggering off at 68 degrees when it should have been like 64. It's because I had the AM and PM switched backwards on when I had the time setting set, okay? Somehow between changing the batteries, this got screwed up, okay? And that's a very common thing I think that's tripping people up and you know, you know, driving them in a loop trying to figure out what's going on. It has its own mind. It's not doing the right thing. It's going to its own program. Well, I think the first thing you need to do, like I said, is do number step one and two, and also double check that time and get your glasses if you need to, because this is very small. You can barely see that PM, okay? But once you set it, then you're all, you're all good to go. Once you know it's correct, uh, you should not have any problems. And when you program this thing, it will follow the program exactly AM or PM as needed or as described. One good thing about this guy is that the time is very, very bold and very large. Okay, you can see right there, it says 2.44 p.m. I really like this thermostat, this new RTH series. I might actually go and swap out all the ones in my home, which are these guys, the most common Honeywell thermostat right here. This is my highly, highly viewed, most highly viewed thermostat on my channel, on my, my uh, thermostat playlist. This is the most common thermostat in use right now in 2025 but I really like this one because it's just as easy to use and it has a larger display which is just easier to to work with and, and, and visually easy to see like I said that time is like right there I can see that that it says p.m. okay and I'm not going to screw that up so that was what was screwing me up is that little symbol there the p.m. or the a.m. and it's very easy to mistake in them because they look exactly the same because the font is so damn small, okay? So that's number three, is make sure you have the correct time and PM or AM symbol on your time date, okay? And make sure that the time of the day of the week is correct as well. That will also screw you up if you're expecting a weekend period versus a weekday period and you don't have the day correct. So very important is to set that up and make it and double check, you know, double check that freaking time because it will screw things all up and not work correctly and in the proper sequence. So that's number three. Let's go on to number four. What is the fourth most common problem or mistake when it comes to this thermostat specifically? Uh, people have a hard time trying to figure out how to like override this thermostat for some reason. Um, it's really not that hard, okay? If you don't have a program schedule already set up in the background, you can use it as a manual thermostat. It's very simple, okay? All you have to do is literally dial in the temp, the set point you want. So if you want it to be, let's go to 72. You can go over here and hit hold. Okay, that's a permanent hold. That's going to hold that set point of 72 now, 24-7, seven, seven days a week, 365 days a year, okay? Until you come back over here and hit run. That's how you negate that whole function right there and you want to get out of hold but let's do that again let's so let's get out of it so hit run to get out of of the hold function let's go to 72 degrees okay let's hit hold and as you can see hold shows up on the screen and there you go that's a permanent hold you've basically operated this thing like a manual thermostat now okay even though it's a programmable thermostat it is now a manual thermostat because you permanently are holding the set point of 72. And if you want to see your set point, it's very simple. All you do is hit the up or down arrow once, only once. Okay. As you can see, it says set 72. That's the set point we just have set up. Okay. And it goes back to the ambient room temperature right here. That is the, you know, a big kind of like point of contention with people. They just don't understand how to override this thing. 
And it's actually very simple. I have videos describing each one of these functions um, separately. If you want to check them out, check out my thermostat playlist. I have this thermostat right here and I go through every single aspect of it and show how to operate it, set it up, program it, uh, manual override, factory reset, all, all you name it, okay? So let's put it back into run. Let's go on to the fifth common mistake people make with this thermostat. And that's not fully programming it, okay? This is a programmable thermostat. So with it, that being said, you have to program it, okay? When you first buy this thing, set it up and go through programming it seven days a week, okay? It is important for you to have that in the background as a default uh, before you do anything else or, or before you go and override it. I encourage you to understand, learn how to program it. Like I said, I have a video covering specifically the programming of this device, okay? And also that same principle I said with the time applies to setting up the seven day schedule. So once you get into the set, the setting up of the each time period, you're gonna get a prompt for a time. And like I, sh like I said earlier, the AM and the PM are gonna trip you up once again, okay? You gotta make sure you have the proper AM and PM set because it will do the same exact thing as having the wrong time. Okay, so between having a wrong time and having a wrong set point time threshold here for each period of the day, which is four times, so you can see what can happen. You could have literally a whole bunch of mistakes because you have four periods of the day, seven days a week. That's 28 mistakes on top of the, uh, the time setting, which is 29 mistakes, okay, for when it comes to the AM or PM possibly being incorrect and completely flipping your schedule and causing all sorts of problems because it's not heating when it should be and it's heating when it should not be, okay? So that, that's, a, that's the biggest thing with this thermostat, I think, is that time setting, the symbol here, is just too small. I can't tell if it's PM or AM. I literally have to have my glasses on and I have to like shine a light, okay, on it because it's so small. The font on it is terrible, okay? And they look the same, like I said, it's, it's, it's kind of hard to see. But like, if you understand that, that that's a problem, now you can kind of work with it and make sure that you can double check that to make sure it's the correct time in the correct PM or AM setting. Okay, so that was the fifth one. Make sure you fully program it and keep keep mind of that AM PM symbol. Uh, I'm gonna give you one more bonus, you know, mistake that people make. Uh, number six is gonna be, once this thermostat audibly clicks, the thermostat is actually functioning. It, that's the full extent of what it's doing. It's a switch, okay? You're, that click you hear is a relay on the circuit board activating as a switch to trigger on your furnace, your boiler, your air handler, whatever it may be, okay? So if you hear it, you know, you make your adjustments and then you hear it click, it's doing its job, okay? If the heating or cooling is not coming on, now that could be a separate, completely separate issue um, relating to your, your other unit that you have upstairs in the, in the attic, downstairs in the basement, or outside, um, you know, has, as a heat exchanger or heat pump, you know, tied into the system. But if your thermostat makes a click noise, it's doing its job, okay? So there could be other issues. And if you have other issues, um, maybe look up some other YouTube videos or have a, an actual professional come to your home and take a look at it to figure out what's actually going on. Um, but that, like I said, you know, a couple of other things why this would click and then say your cooling doesn't turn on. So the cooling has a delay time. So you have a compressor protection function in this. It's, it's about five minutes. So it, it basically protects the AC compressor from cycling off and on too many times within a, a short period of time. Okay. You don't want your AC compressor turning off and on every two minutes. Okay. So that's, this is why it has the AC compressor protection. So you'll notice if you go to turn on, say you go to cooling 72, right? It goes to cool and it's, it starts flashing, okay? When it says cool and it's flashing, it means it's in a wait period, okay? It's in that time, that delay time frame where it's waiting to start off the compressor outside, okay? That's what it's doing and it's gonna flash here cool on the screen. Now, for heating, it doesn't do that, okay? Heating usually will start up almost immediately within 10 seconds. You'll hear 
your boiler or your furnace or your air handler turn on, your fan turn on, and water or air starting to circulate in your home, okay? Whether it's baseboard heating or central air. Now, that's how it works. And, um, you know, like I said, don't be worried if, if your AC compressor doesn't turn on right away. There's a, there's a delay on it, and you can actually turn it off if you want. But I don't recommend that. You want to give it some time to, like, kind of sit and rest before you ask it to turn back on. That way it prevents excessive wear and things like, things like that. So another thing people kind of worry about is like, oh, why isn't it heating my home? Well, like I said, if everything's operating correctly, your home, depending on its size, needs some time to acclimate. You know, it takes some time to heat and cool. It's a big thermal mass and you need to actually heat the air to heat the, the actual mass, the structure, uh, the floor, the furniture, all the materials in your home have to heat up um, through your heating system, basically through either air or radiant heat, whichever one you have, in order to come up to temperature. So your thermostat, even though you set it to 72, might take, you know, eight hours before it reaches 72, okay? If you, especially if it's like, say, 60 in the home, okay? You have to give it some time to actually operate, okay? That's, that's one thing I want to mention is that you have to be patient. You don't want to be just turning on your heating or cooling for th three, four hours a day and expecting it to, to, to cool or heat a big home, okay? You have to keep it consistently on. And that takes me on to the next kind of point is that you never want to drop your thermostat more than four degrees between each one of these time periods. As you have it programmed, say, 168 and then the next one, you don't want to drop it to 60. You want to keep it like within four degrees. So you drop the, the next time period, say sleep, drop it to 64, okay? You do not want to go more than four degrees because what happens if you go like more than kind of four degrees is that you lose all that thermal mass that you're building up. You're basically building up a bunch of heat or a bunch of cool in your home. And if your home is insulated well, it should do well and keep that heating or cooling uh, for a longer period of time. But if you drop it more than four degrees per, per, per schedule period, you're going to have your heating and cooling system is going to have a hard time catching up. The heating and cooling works best. Just leaving it set to one kind of temperature, like leaving it at 67 or 68 and letting it do its thing to acclimate and build up that thermal mass, heating up all that structure in your home. And then once it does that, it actually will turn off and on less. Okay. Believe it or not. Instead of you constantly turning it on for three, four hours, thinking you're saving it, uh, energy, which you are, but you're also driving yourself crazy because you're not let just like setting it in and forgetting it and letting it do its thing. You're constantly on top of it, micromanaging it. That's one way of doing it, but I recommend not doing that. Just program the thermostat and have it operate how it's designed to operate. Just bring those set points to a reasonable set, set point temperature that's acceptable for you and your budget and your, you know, your home efficiency. But that there, guys, uh, you know, is some of the common mistakes. I just want to make this video to cover, you know, what people are encountering and what I see in the comments and the, and the questions I get. But that there is the video for the five common mistakes. Check out my other videos. I'll have them linked in the, the balloon icon in the upper right. So check them out to the related videos. And I will be making other videos coming up with wiring up these thermostats and the new style one. So I want to thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.